Hey guys, Robert with 3D Printscape. So today I'm going to show you how to set up multiple instances of OctoPi on a single device. I'm going to be using my Raspberry Pi, uh, but you don't necessarily have to. If you have any other machine that's running uh, Linux, you can use that as well. A little while back I did a video kind of showing you how to control multiple printers using a single instance of OctoPi. Uh, there are limitations with that though. Now you can really only control the one printer at a time, but you can still connect to both of them. Uh, if you're wanting to be able to control more than one printer at a time and without having to impact the other one, uh, this is the route you're going to want to go. Uh, I'm going to be using the latest version, which is 0.18 uh, at the time of this recording. Um, that's important because they just switched to Python 3 for support and they changed a lot of the process um, as well. So we'll be going through all of that. And then as always, if you have any questions about the process, uh, feel free to leave a comment below or join me on Discord and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. And if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. All right, so I'm here at the computer. The first thing we wanna go ahead and do is grab the software we're gonna to need to get started. Uh, I will make a note that we are going to have to SSH into uh, the Octopi image. Uh, I'm going to paste all of the commands that I'm using into the description below. Uh, once I get through uh, writing up all the written instructions, I'll have them in a lot better format on my website, uh, so you'll be able to follow that. But everything that I go over will be in the description and on that website. All right, so first thing we want to do is grab the latest image of Octopi. Like I mentioned before, 0 0.18 is the latest right now, but um, there are some significant changes in it because they added the newer version of Python. Uh, so it does change quite a bit. So if you're on 0 0.17 or have done this um, same setup in the past, uh, it's worth going through this because the process has changed. All right, so let's go ahead and download that really quick. And then jump over to Rufus. We want to download this as well. We're going to use this to copy the image onto the uh, SD card. Uh, so I'm just going to go down here and just download. And then lastly, you're going to need a uh, SSH tool. I recommend using PuTTY if you're just getting started. Um, you just go here and download PuTTY. I already have it installed, but you'll just download this 64-bit uh, MSI here and just run through the installer. It's just default settings all the way through. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and bring up our Explorer. As you can see here, we have our two files. Um, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and burn the image to our SD card. So I'm just going to launch Rufus. And this is a really simple tool to use. Uh, we're just going to make sure the SD card is there, which I have it right here. It's just a 32 gig SD card. And then select the image we just downloaded. And then hit Start. It's going to warn you that it's going to erase everything on the SD card, uh, so that's fine. And then it's going to delete that and then write everything we need to the file. All right, now that that's done, we'll go ahead and close out of here. And then we have to go add our Wi-Fi information. All right, so we want to just go into the boot drive and then go down to octopi-wpa and then just edit this in notepad or notepad plus uh, plus but what we need to do is uncomment the connection we're going to be using uh, so i'm going to be using wpa2 so i'm just going to uncomment this uh, make sure you remove uh, the comments here because if you don't even though you put the information in there it's not going to work i've wasted some time on that um but yeah, just go ahead and put your SSID here. Keep in mind, this is Linux, so it is going to be case sensitive. And then I'm going to pause the video, put my password in here, and then save the file. All right, now that that's done, we can go ahead and eject this, and then go to put the SD card in the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to do that really quick. All right, now that that's powered on and your computer has Bonjour installed, you can go to octopi.local. If you have some other security tools or uh, firewalls blocking those ports, that probably won't work, so I'm not expecting it to work for me. Uh, but if you go back over to uh, the actual Octopi site, you'll see here that you can um, go here and download Bonjour. I do have that installed, uh, but it does walk through the install process here. Um, like I said, for me, most of the time that doesn't work because of my security tools, uh, so I don't even bother with it. Now, what I do is I go to my router, 
and then um, you'll see that Octopi got added and then I just go ahead and add in the IP address so I've got my IP address here and then I can just browse to that and then we want to run through the setup the first time and then we'll connect to everything with uh, Putty all right so let's just go ahead and launch this I would recommend trying with octopi.local first uh, see if it does work for you uh, all right so let's go ahead and hit next um, we're not restoring from backup we're just going through setting up the default profile so that it's there when we need it all right so I'm just going to go ahead and create a user here and then hit create account and then next and I'm not going to uh, share any of my data so I'm just going to disable these and then just leave that as it is all right with that now we have the first instance of octopi if i had a printer connected i would be able to connect to that but uh, for now i don't have my printers connected because we will have a step later where we have to get data um, so what we want to do now is we want to ssh over to uh, the octopi device so i'm going to go ahead and pull up putty And then I'm going to put my IP address, or if octopi.local works for you, you can put that as well. Actually, I'm going to save this. And then I uh, go ahead and hit yes on this. It's just saying that the thumbprints changed, um, or the fingerprints changed since the last time. All right, then we connect. Uh, default username is pi, and the password is raspberry. Um, I do recommend that you change at least that password. Um, it's not difficult to change, but leaving it with a default password is a bad security practice. I'm going to end up wiping this again, so I'm not going to worry about changing it, but um, that is something that I would recommend doing. And you can do that with the password command, which is P-A-S-S-W-D. Hit enter, and then it's going to ask you for the current password, then you can put the new password in. So I'm just going to close out of that, though. All right, now that that's done, I'm gonna make a note here that this might seem like it's a lot of steps when you're in here. Uh, it's not that bad. It was a little bit of a challenge to get working the first time, but I've got the process uh, hammered down. So if you run into issues, you can reach out. Uh, but if you follow the instructions, it should just work for you. All right, so first thing we wanna do is make a copy of the Octoprint install. So I'm just gonna use this command here. It's I'm going to create a second instance called octoprint2. Then if we just do an ls-la on our home directory, you'll see that it added that here. All right, now I want to jump over to the root user. So I'm going to do uh, sudo su root. It just makes a couple of the next commands easier. And again, the password here is raspberry or whatever you changed it to. Then we wanna change directory into our system directory and then make a copy of the octoprint service, uh, which is just copying this file uh, to octoprint2. And if we do a cat on that file, if you're interested what it actually is, it's just a couple of the um, parameters that it's looking for. So you've got a port, which we're gonna change that to 0.0.0.0 uh, because it doesn't like multiple running on the same host. And then the port's gonna be 5001. Um, and then we're gonna specify a base path to the new directory as well. So this next command here is gonna do all of that for us. It's changing the, the contents of that file, changing the loopback address to zero, uh, changing the port from 5000 to 5001, and then adding in uh, the second, uh, sorry, the baseline directory here. So if we do a cat again on that file, you'll see that that did change there, there, and there. These files are really pretty straightforward. They're pretty clean, uh, so no uh, real surprises. They're pretty simple. All right, next thing we want to do is tell Linux to start this on startup. So we're just going to enable it. 
and then it created the sim link. So next time you start up the Raspberry Pi, if you reboot it, it's going to have that there. And then we can go ahead and start it, make sure the service starts fine. And then you can check to see the status of both of those by uh, just doing a status check. Uh, you can see here's the first one. Uh, it's currently running. And here's the second instance. It's running as well. All right, now if I try to go to that, it should go ahead and launch and it should have the same info as the last instance. Um, so I'll just do the IP address colon 5001 for the port. And then I can just log in with that account that I created last time. And here we have the two instances. So right now, if I were to go through and just update uh, the version of Octoprint. So I just did a check and I'm just going to hit update all. It's going to run through and then restart this. While it's restarting that, I want to make a note here. If you, you want to go into settings and then go down to server, then you want to add a two to the end of this. So that way it starts or restarts the right service. Because if not, it's going to restart the main service and not this one. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then this one's back online, and as you can see here, it has um, latest versions. And then if I go back over here, let me just do a service restart really quick. I'll show you. So I'm just stop. I wanted to do that so that it um, pulls in that change that we just made as well around the right uh, path. All right, so we should be able to reconnect to this now. All right, so just a reminder that the instance is tied to each other uh, for uh, the actual backing components. So the version and plugins will be the same. Uh, but you're going to have your camera and stuff on your first one. And then on the second one, you're not going to have the camera unless you tie a USB camera to it. All right, so that's the easy part. Now let's go to pull putty back up. And we want to... go ahead and plug in our printers and get the ports from them. I'm going to do one at a time. So we want to do a tail on var log messages. So that way we can see uh, what ports it gets when it starts up. And basically we're going to be looking for this information here. So I'm going to make two copies of this. And those are going to be used for uh, getting the information we need so we can map the instance back to uh, the actual printer. So now I'm going to go plug in my first printer and I'll be right back. All right, so I just plugged in my first printer. It's an Ender 3 with an SKR Mini. So as you can see, it has everything in the log here from when it started up. Um, there's no serial number. Uh, same with the standard Ender 3. Uh, so this is going to be blank. Uh, with some of the printers, you will get a serial number. Um, the advantage of having a serial number is you don't have to map it back to a USB port. Uh, but in this case, we don't have that option, so we will have to map it back to the port. Uh, what that means is you want to keep that printer on that same port because uh, that's where it's going to be looking for it at. So first thing, we get the ID vendor here. So we want to copy that out and then just go ahead and paste it here. And then the product is uh, 0004. And then our dev path is going to be the USB port. So it's 1.2. As you can see right here, we have 1.2. And then the sim link is going to be the name that we're going to call it. Now this is going to be case sensitive and you will have to reference this later. So uh, make sure you name it uh, to something that makes sense and that is meaningful to you. So I'm going to call it Ender3-SKR. Uh, just so I know which printer it is. All right, now with that, I'm going to go plug my other printer in. We're going to fill up this line, and then we'll copy this over to where it needs to go. All right, I'm back, and as you can see, it pulled in the information we needed, so it saw the printer. So our vendor is going to be this. Our product ID is going to be here. And then our port is 1.4. And then I'm going to name this Ender 3 
422 because it's an Ender 3 with the 422 board. Uh, so that makes sense to me. All right, now we actually have to update our rules file so that it knows what is attached to what. So if we just go ahead and go into this file here, and again, all of this will be in the description below for the commands, and then I will have an article on it as well pretty soon. And we want to add these two lines that we just created to that. And then we can save it. Now let's go ahead and hop back over to our instances. Uh, let's go over to instance one first, and then go into settings. And then under this serial port here, we want to do slash dev slash the name of the instance that we created. So the first one I'm going to have as my SKR board. So it's going to look like that. And then we can save it. And then on the second one, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. Uh, so we want to do slash dev and then the ender 3422. All right. Now what I want to do is go ahead and reboot the system. So I'm going to do that really quick just to make sure all the changes take effect because you're not going to see these with the right names here yet. All right, so just go to uh, reboot system. All right, then once your system is back online, you go ahead and hit reload or reload the page. If you close out of it, and then we should have our printers under each respective instance. So here we have Ender 3 SKR, and then here we have Ender 3 422. So I'm going to connect to this one. Then if you look under terminal, you'll see that I connected to it, and then all the information about it. And then same thing over here. I'm going to go ahead and connect to this one. And you can see under terminal that it connected properly. And it has all the information for that printer. So this allows you to control multiple printers at the same time. Where if you just had the one instance and multiple printers connected to the one instance, you can control them both, uh, just not at the same time. If you have a third printer, you can just repeat the process going through the same commands, just switching the two out with a three at the end of Octoprint, and then switch the port from 5001 to 5002, and then so forth for the additional instances. But that's really all there is to it. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward once the process is um, vetted out. Uh, getting to that point did take me some time, but spending that time did help me out quite a bit because I was able to get a better understanding of how everything with Octoprint was set up on the actual device. Also, one last thing I wanted to point out is make sure that you have your printer on and connected to power before you try to heat anything up. Uh, right now, I just have these connected over USB, and it's not going to have enough power to try to actually heat the bed or the nozzle. So that was the process of setting up multiple instances of Octopi on a single device. You can follow that same process to add additional instances as well. Uh, you will be limited by the number of USB ports you have. And if you guys are interested, I can write a script to automate a lot of that for you. Uh, I didn't want to uh, go ahead and just do that up front because I didn't know how much interest there would be in it. But if that's something that enough people want, I have no problem doing it. Just go ahead and leave a comment below asking for it. Um, it will take a little bit of time to write it, so that's why I was trying to find the right balance. Uh, but again, if you guys have any questions or have any issues with the process, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join me on Discord and I'll try to help out as much as I can. Also, if you guys have any plugins you'd like me to do a video on, go ahead and leave a comment below. Uh, I'm looking to do a couple videos on plugins here coming up pretty soon, so I'll be curious to see what plugins you guys are the most interested in and I'll try to do videos on those. Thanks.